Welcome back. Today we're going to do warm water fly because we're just about to launch the, well we're not just about to, we're launch the uh, corona, kill the coronavirus thing here. And the first uh, category was warm water top water. So I'm going to do, I had to dig all over to find one. I didn't have many left. This one's beat to hell. Uh, but it's a mouse that I've done a long time. Uh, I just, I did it, I think I started fishing this way back in Michigan time. and. And a couple things, I mean, we're going to go through, it's a super simple fly, it looks like hell now. It's all ratted out, there's a lot of stuff missing on it too, but uh, we're going to, I'm going to tie this kind of the way I did originally. I can't really remember the first one, and I'm going to try to do more of these flies that aren't production flies, just because I think everybody knows them and they're getting, some are pretty boring, but this one, this is a unique fly because it's, at least it's beat to death. Still got its tippet in it, but <clears throat> my flies. When you know, when I when I grew up in Michigan, and night fishing was our thing, and and we fished mice virtually every night. You know, we'd fish the hex hatch at least two months a year, three months a year we'd fish mice, and so and mostly it was uh, because we had to fish. We'd fish spinner falls in the evening, especially for in the hex and the isonychias and the big bugs, and so. But then we would mouse out. You know, we'd fish till dark and, you know, well, we wouldn't even start till 1030 or so. And then fish until midnight, one o'clock, and then mouse out on your way out back to the vehicle. And so we did a lot of it. And the thing that I realized way back when, and man, we tried every, every possible hook configuration under the planet, was that if you had a 10% uh, positive hookup on mouse fishing, you were, you were somebody. And then we get these, you know, nothing to get 10, 15 blowups and get one or two fish if you're lucky or get none. And so I started looking at it more and more. And then I did, got a little weird, started weighing mice. And because I couldn't figure out, we would take and we would put stingers. We'd have these, we'd use fly line for tail, put a little treble hook, a little 16, 18 treble hook back there. Nothing. We put the hooks, you know, we'd put it double hooks and we'd put a hook on the top and we're putting all this thing. The thing about it is they're blowing them up. They're hitting them and trying to stun them. And so, and we, we would blow them out of the water is what I, you know, you know, was seeing. And, and so I started weighing the mice and the mice would be anywhere, you know, I'd trap one and it would be anywhere from three to five, you know, three and a half, four ounces. And so I kind of speculated that maybe we were blowing these things out of the water. I started weighting my mice. And getting them down deep you know everything about mice in the old days was just float 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 and so and it was really before many people were mousing up in alaska even they're just we, we were just kind of fresh into it and so i started waiting them and then i and i had a really positive response and i, and I got more fish and then i started already articulating them and the first ones are pretty much all hair same thing just trying to make them look more like a mouse that didn't do diddly and so, but this one's always been really good to me. And the, the whole premise to this, even though it's not much left of it, is that its ass would hang down in the water. And if you've ever seen a mouse, I mean, throw one out in the water if you watch it, and they're, they kind of try to run like crazy, but their hind ends are in the water. And they're, 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 they're not like all on top. There's a lot of that mouse down, and they are pushing an acoustic footprint. I mean, they are wham, showing, you know, throwing these, shockwaves of the hertz wavelength down into the water and those fish are tracks mostly you know it's a night thing uh well it's not mostly a night thing you can fish mice anytime you want and, and what you'll find is in the daytime if you're mousing at least for me i got probably half to two-thirds less day eats but when i got an eat in the day it was a positive eat they it was way up in that 50 percent range compared to the you know 10 if you're lucky 10 percent at night and so at, at, on my night flies, and that's what this is, evening fly, I'm not as concerned with color. If you're going to day mouse, it's very simple. And, and when Jeremy and I were just talking about this, about people asking about recipes. And there's, you know, just change it. Just do something. Make it yourself. Make it your own. And all I do if I'm going to do this for a day mouse is instead of using black rabbit, and this one was marabou. I do both ways, do marabou or rabbit. And the original ones, I think I, I did dubbing loop rabbit. But in the daytime, I do like to see the color to the belly. And so I don't really think the top means much, but I use, I'll use, you know, just tan uh, or creamy tan or white uh, marabou if I'm going to use that or if I'm using 
rabbit, I'll use this, this you know, whatever color. So it's a pretty simple fly. It's, it's going to be articulated. It's got, I'm going to use a 7052 hook back here on the back. Uh, this, I've never used this hook on this fly. It's just, it, it's the new ring eyes that I, you know, came up with MFC. It's going to make, it's easier for me to articulate with this. Uh, <clears throat> the front hook's going to be uh, a B10S number four. You could go twos, fours, sixes on this. This one's a six. This is a smaller one. Uh, I'm going to use a four on this, on this particular one. Uh, let's see. It's got a little tiny, and I'll talk about that as we go through. It's got a little bit of natural deer hair. This isn't necessary. You could use black. You could probably eliminate this completely if you wanted to. And then it's going to have, uh, where'd it go? Black rabbit strip. I'm going to, I'm going to do this in a dubbing loop and we're going to push that forward for the tail. And then it's going to have, uh, a couple, these aren't really, these are legs, tail. I don't know what the hell I put these in for, but I did it originally. You know, just, it, it's just how I did it. And then I'm going to put some rubber legs in it. And quite frankly, this one doesn't have any left. Uh, I don't think these are necessary. I don't think you have to put the rubber, rubber legs in at all. I don't know. It, it looks cool. It, it gives it more stuff hanging around back there flopping. So I, I do it. And so, and then we'll get to the front. We're just going to have a deer hair head because that's it. And, and I do recall on that first grouping, I used to put uh, rubber legs on the front of that up in front there. I know it, it doesn't matter to me. I, I, half the time I break them off and, you know, if you get fish on your, it, especially at night, I'm reaching in there with my hemos and I break the damn things off half the time anyway. So, but, and, and again, feel free to, the, the whole point of this, and, and a lot of these this year are going to be more freestyle. And because I, I just, I, you know, recipes are great, especially when you're starting. It's fun to have an idea what it should look like. But the more you freestyle, the more you just kind of, you'll, you'll tie the fly, you watch it in the water, and you'll start looking for reasons to make it different. Like it's not doing something you like, and then you change it. And that's when you kind of develop your own style into fly time. So I'm going to use GSP 100 on this for, uh, I think that's all, GSP 100 for the thread and away we go here so this fly originally and this is all going to be the hind end right this is the belly or the you know from about two-thirds away up the fly and so i'm not real concerned with the head on this fly it's going to be covered and so in here i wax my thread and if you take a look at this it, it's totally beat i can't see it but underneath here there's a little bit of a little bit of deer hair. Now, the whole idea of this fly is I want its hind end to sink in, right? But I still want it to, and you'll see, oh, I forgot one thing. I'm gonna have a flank on there. I forgot that when I was telling you. I want it to sink in, but I want its butt to go underwater, and I, I want it to almost sink the entire fly, but I don't want it, but I still want it to build a little bulk and have that tendency to try to ride up. Hence the fact that I put this deer hair in here and then I put the uh, flank feathers. I want it to be heavy and pushed down in the water, but I still want it to be on the surface because that's the cool thing about mouse is they blow the hell out of them. And so the first thing I'm going to put in here, oops, is my little tails. I guess that's why I put these in in the first place was tails. I don't know. These are, I don't, this is just a, uh, a Ewing saddle. Uh, these are, I, I love these things, they're real versatile, I get all kinds of use out of them. And so, but it doesn't really matter. Any, I, I, I used a lot of just, uh, this, the stuff on the neck that I didn't use as much. I, I, I tried to find out, like there's some in there, you know, at the, the very top of your neck, you know, up at the neck where it's really short and fine. I used those and you use them up to the sweet spot and I'd always end up with necks that had you know, the stuff right in that point where it's not big enough for a big hex and it's, I don't tie many size 12 brown. I would use that stuff up. And so people are always asking me, what do you use for that? And I got to tell you, especially when I was younger, I found uses for everything I could. And so just because my hackles look like this, if you look at this one, those are dry fly hackles. That's a size 16 or 18 dry fly hackle that I just popped off the neck. I don't, these are bigger than that. I'm just gonna put them in here, I want two. I don't even know what I put those in for originally. I thought they looked cool probably. 
but feel free to eliminate. And I don't really care. I'm going to set these side by side right on top. And I'm not, it's just, it's going to be a tail, kind of. I don't care where they go, if they're, they're swinging around. I don't, it's going to go together and be a tail. I'm not really worried about this set. I'm just giving them there because I always did it. And then I'm going to take this short fine. And if you look at this, this whole fly is black. And you don't really see this, but inside there's this butt. And that the idea of this was to keep it up just a little bit, just so it's, it's trying to fight. I want it to fight itself. I want it to make waves. Like when you watch them, they're like, they're doing this and they're trying to stay on top and their hind ends underwater and legs are kicking like crazy back there. It, but it's a lot of disturbance. It's not real exacting. And this was simply to keep that hind end up just a little bit. And it's a pretty good gob of this stuff. It's, you know, pencil, pencil and a half, whatever. Um, a fly to be tied later. <clears throat> we'll do that one in a week or two. So I'm gonna, I don't really care about this, rather it's all stacked and pretty, but I also don't like when people use that as an excuse to tie like crap. And so come in here, stack it just because it's a good habit. still going to do it how it should be. Now this one, I want it past the bend of the hook, not, not too far. I want it to flare out. And so it holds the flies butt up a little bit. And I actually, I'm going to do it just like I would a collar or I was, if I was going to do a, uh, like an elk hair caddis style head or something like that. So I'm just spinning that thread. So it lays back over my hand. I'm going to come forward just a little bit. I've got a I've got a tight pinch wrap on right here so that the hair, I'm still going to do this. It slipped a little bit. So I'm still going to do this. It's, I'm holding it on top. I got two turns. I'm going to set it nice and tight, right? And see, I've got my little deer hair head right there. It's nice and tight. I'm going to go through it with two turns. See, I don't destroy that head. And there I've got that bulky and it's nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. Push it down. The whole idea of this is it's going to fight me. Now, because all dry flies should be weighted, well, maybe not all of them, I'm going to put about 15 turns, roughly, of 0.25. 12, 13, 14, 15, right in that neighborhood. This is, again, not exacting. You know, if that scares you, you can leave it out. <laughs> uh, the idea of this fly is that it's, kind of down. I could have put that in first, but I, I'm just going to build a little body over top of it. And all of this is going to go away in a second. So I'll, this is a good spot for you to practice your thread control. Just go back and forth. It's going to want to go set down into that lead. Bingo. Hey, where'd that go? Now we're going to take, now I'm going to put a, this is, you can see it's a, it, if you, this is the old one here when I did it with Marabou. Marabou's fine, a little lighter. I, the, you, I can't overemphasize, I don't care. As long as it doesn't drag that fly underwater, you can't put enough weight on the signed end. It'll just, the further it sinks in, the more realistic that fly is going to be as far as putting out that, the kind of the, the wavelength that you're looking for. So just cover this up. Most of this is going to go away. It's again, this is a great time to practice your thread control. Get up here and all this is going to get tied away. Now, I'm not positive. I kind of forgot right there. I'm not positive on my first ones if I put my legs back here or if I put the legs in the front. And I, because I do about a third half, no, it's about half. Half the time I forget to put the legs in, half the time I put them in. I believe I used to put them up here thinking that they would kind of move a little bit extra. So that's where we're going to go with them today. If you wanted to tie them in right here before you start this, that would be fine too. So they'd be sitting right here, right? And so they're just hang. We'll do it back. Well, uh, if I wasn't, if I didn't have that loop there already, I'd put them in right here and you could see it, but not too hard to figure out. You could put them in right here. All these are supposed to be is the back legs. 
the one I had two of these left over in my box when I was looking and some of them actually some of them had the legs up on the front hook uh, I it, it's a whatever it's a random act of terror that we're doing here so I took my bobbin cradle out bingo things are going crazy now we're freestyling now I was watching, I was telling Jeremy, I was watching this guy who's a, a airbrush guy, and I was looking for something on the internet, and he, this guy was funny as all get out. He's a really good model guy, and airbrusher. He said, sometimes you just have to use your brain and your hands at the same time. So you, you just kind of freelance, that's what he was saying. You gotta figure it out. So you're gonna, you're gonna use the same thing here. And now again, if this was a if this was a day mouse right and you're going to do it up and, and you're going to go out in the daytime you're simply going to change this i think the belly color at least i felt like it made a difference in the daytime at night i don't find any difference whatsoever actually i like the dark flies better but i, I don't think it makes much difference at night in the daytime i for sure see that i want to see the belly on it and it, you know it's kind of a brown gray and so I'm looking for the longest hair on this because I want it to be pretty, I want it to basically go over and cover all that. So I'm gonna come in here, this is just a zonk piece of magnum strip, wouldn't matter. If you're using full rabbit, that's fine. So I just, I cut that off the skin. I'm trying to keep it flat in my hand. So that, and I'm gonna spread this out. And it, you'll, I've said this in a lot of them, a lot of the videos I don't like to use glue or glue excuse me uh, dubbing wax when I work with this stuff I like to be able to move it if you like it that's fine it's just I get a little bit more control for me when I put this in here without the wax that wasn't much control right there kind of lost that one give me you I'll do you in two steps if you're gonna fight me that was fighting me and I like to be able to spread this out you get used to it just moving it around and I don't I don't need it to be super in heavy back here it's gonna it's gonna get wet obviously and it's gonna lay down I'm gonna try to put this second one in here just so I know I have enough just kind of spread that out in your hand a little bit before you go and I can should be able to get this pretty close to open to not drop all of it. If I drop it all, be give something people something to talk about. There you go. So I can manipulate this just by loosening. I'm loosening the, the tension on my um, dubbing tool, just not pulling on the thread so tight. So all I'm doing is getting this basically the same length. The more you leave hanging out, the little butt ends. The more bulk you'll build, the more it'll give you a little bit of fluff in that end you know it just kind of holds this other hair up but then just you don't you're not going to need all this anyway just kind of arrange it so it's relatively close give it a slow turn just make sure everything's looking how you want it and give it the spin you're fine <coughs> excuse me so now I'm going to just kind of stroke that back so it's I don't care. I really don't care how this lays on here. It's just a bulk builder, but I still want it to lay back against the the body. So it's all. So what I'm trying to do is kind of cover all this up. Just keep stroking it back here. It's this isn't a. It's fighting a little bit right there. If you're doing this with marabou, it's going to do the same thing. You're going to. We're just filling this gap. That's all we're doing. And kick that black hair out of the back. Too. Sorry. So there's our, the body's nice and thick. And, but again, the, the reason, this is more, it's not so much about the actual bulk of the, it's the weight of the material. It's the, it's the weight of carrying this down. So sit here and I wanted to kind of half-ass cover up the the 
under fur, the, the hair here, but I don't. I mean, if you think about a mouse, I don't want it to go completely away, and that's that's why this tufts back here, the, you know, they're shaped, they're, they're fat asses. They go down like this, right? And they're swimming. There's, their heads get really skinny looking. There's hardly anything to them. And then they've got a, they get a fat hind end. And so they're going to go, and that's what I'm trying to do with this, and that's going to be the fight. And so I'm going to put a couple rubber legs in here. I don't really care if you put these in. Uh, this is, uh, I, I don't think they make much. And again, back here, up front, it's whatever you like. I, I, I think I, at least a half of mine, I don't put them in. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to come across here and I want you to see how little, I have no pressure on this thread right now. And, I, and I've done this on a lot of videos about how to set these. So I did a figure eight. I'm going to pull those back a little bit. See how they're back there. I have two. I went right to left, left to right. I did a figure eight on top of this. I know you might be able to see it. There should be an X on top of that. Can you see that, Jeremy? Maybe a little, bit. a little bit. There's an X. It went from right to left. So it went from the front to the back, came under the back to the front, and I made a figure eight. And I don't have any pressure on that thread. Now I go one, two, and I tighten the second one. Now my legs are right on top where they belong, and I can, I didn't fight them. Again, don't want them, don't put them in. And then so I'll get those in a second. I still got to put my flanks on. And so now I'm going to put a pair of flanks on here. It's a good place to burn up some, you, you don't have, it's not like a zoo cougar or something like that where you need really good flank feathers so that the, the tracks out. This is more about wobble. And this is a good place. If you got some compromised feather, perfect. It, it's, it's, you just weighted the damn thing. <laughs> you're, you're just trying to, all this is to do is to make that cup and keep it, and make it do kind of like wobbling. Right, and so it just keeps it there on the top. <sighs> End of the day, Java. They don't usually let me drink coffee. That's not always real, you know. It's more fun to watch you shake. Yeah, Jeremy says it's fun to watch me shake, and I talk too much as it is, so it it helps the uh, it helps keep things going for me. Now I'm gonna lay both these right on top. I'm gonna, if I can, I'm just keep them right on top here. I've got a, I, I put three or four pinches on here. If I don't, if that doesn't lay right, I don't like the way that's laying. It's a, this is a little, one of the disadvantages on this hook, and, and there, it's the only one I can think of, and it's, I've only found it in a couple of applications, is that the hook's up and down, right here in front of me, instead of being like this. And so when I lay a double set on here, uh, I've only had a couple things that bug me when I do it is that I can't lay, they tend to split the hook right here. See how that wants to go around it? And so I'm going to just do a single third, pinch it down nice and tight so it's right on top, sitting nice and flat. <clears throat> when I try to do a, hey, get back here. When I try to do a double with that, it tends to spin on me because it's it splits that hook. So on this second foot, I was saying that on when you're, Trying to fight this when it's trying to go over the hook, it tends to go sideways on you. My second one, I'm going to cut it off in advance so I don't have to fight it. So I'm going to cut it pretty short, just so you don't have to. If your hook was a traditional flat eye hook, you know, uh, where'd that thing go? It would it would go around it, but uh, because it's not and it's standing up, it's just. So I'm going to set that right in front, just this side of it. You can barely see it. There, there. Come here. Give me you. I'm going to set it right here. I'm going to push my thread over just to roll it over just a little bit. Get a nice clean. And again, this is a good place to use not such perfect feathers. Because if, if your feather's laying off to one side, a little bit this way, a little bit that way, or if they don't lay right on top, this isn't a bad spot to have that happen. I mean, if you've got feathers where you know, you buy these bags of flank feathers. We do those, we do, we're not doing them right now because we don't have enough good feather to do it. But we sort those feathers out. I mean, most of them are, you know, you go through a bag, $10 bag of flank, which is not really flank, most of it's belly feathers. And you get done with it. It's not uncommon to have five or 10 good feathers. And so 
this is a great place to use some of those up. So I'm just going to, I'm not putting a lot of tension on that. I'm just going to whip finish this. Gotcha. Wouldn't hurt to give it a shot of glue right there. Now, what happened to that? I think I, there it is. So this is the B10S. I'm going to move this forward. Um, this fly, <clears throat> You can, on this attachment, if you want to, so this is the, this is the back hook. Give me this. I'm using 038 uh, is going to be the wire. I don't put any beads or anything on here. There's really not much else to this thing. We're just going to put the head on. And we're going to, I'm going to, I always I wrap these back through the eye um, when I do this. I, yeah, some people don't, some people do. If you glue this thing really well, I don't think you need to. But on these short shanked hooks, on a long shank hook, it's probably not as likely to pull out. But on these short shank hooks, I just feel a lot more secure using putting it through the eye and coming back. And so I use the smaller wire. You get up into a size two. You could use the 0.406, the 0.046, and you would be all right. But this is 3.8, and so I'm going to come in here, and this is what this is the beauty of these hooks, the 7052, that it's straight, that it's it, I fought it on my feather. But when I lay this on top, both pieces are right there. Right? I can see it. It's nice and it's laying right on top of the hook. I can adjust it. I don't have to fight it. In the old days, when you use the regular the hook that's like this, you have to run them on the side, come up and through, and you fought it a little bit. This was, that's why this hook was made. It was made just so we can articulate with it, and it doesn't, and it doesn't fight you putting the thread on. And so this is going to be right on top, right here. I don't want this to be, loosen up a little bit. I don't want it to be really long, way back there. That. Uh, about a bead. I'm not going to put a bead on it. The beads are originally put on to keep stuff from getting hooked in it. And I'm not putting a bead on because there's not going to be anything into it. And I want it to be able to ride down so its hind end rides in the water like this. So I don't want the articulation too close, too far up. I just want it so it's kind of setting down. You see how it's kind of setting down already? You could even go a little bit further. It's already down like that. I don't it's not a traditional swimming bait fish and so they're both on top I'm gonna run my wires up through here just in and out of there you'll never ever have one of these pull out when you go through these it's funky push your thumb into it right there just before you go too far, double check and make sure that your eye, and nothing more frustrating when you get done with this if you don't check and you let that loosen up a little bit, you can't get your tippet through it. I mean, everybody's done it. And so just make sure that you're, you've got a nice clean eye opening right there and come in and work your way back. So again, if you want to right now, throw a little glue on this. I'm not going to do it. I don't really. I throw these things into the trees so fast it doesn't matter. I'm a terrible caster. And Johnny reminds me of that frequently, by the way. All right, so that's a little high for me to work around. Might have to do the old-fashioned. Nope, can't do it. I'm trying to use my new hook keeper thing, but. I have to make sure I can. That's fine. Irritates me that it's sideways, but I'm not gonna. So there, I'm gonna. Now I'm back to the. I've got this down just slightly. I'm gonna come back here, and this is what I was saying. If you want to give this a little hit of glue, uh, just so nothing gets in there. You know, teeth. You know, hit it right now. A little bit of zap or whatever you want to use. Just hit this, and that'll. I'm not worried about this part. I'm worried about the teeth getting into that thread right there and starting to unravel. Highly unlikely. 
<clears throat> really unlikely if Johnny's fishing because he never caught a fish on it. So, we're going to do a really, this is going to be a kind of a, we're going to pack this kind of tight. We're going to come forward right about to the tip of the hook. Again, we're breaking, there are no rules, but you just, we're, we're changing this up to adapt it to this fly. Generally, I tell people I like the hook to start the, your hook, your thread to be hanging right by the gouge. This is a top water fly, a little different. <clears throat> I might double stack that, this uh, collar, because I want a really beefy collar on this thing. And I can't, I didn't get enough hair in there on the first one, so we'll do a double. I want it to go about quarter, maybe an inch into this right here, so it kind of covers that. You know, okay. I want it to be kind of homogenous as one piece, you know, when you're when looking from the bottom. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to do a double stack. I'm going to come in here with the, uh, with the collar and I'll pinch it just like always. Whenever you do a collar, I'm going to pull. I'm letting it work down. I've got a super tight pinch on this. I'm, I'm going to pull straight down. Whoa, that was a little bit too rough. Really tight right there. I'm going to go over that. I'm going to double this up because I want a really big one. And this hair, here's the big stack here. <clears throat> this hair was a, it's pretty long. It's, it's nice hair, but it's, it's kind of tippy, meaning that it's got long tip hair on it. And it's not, not like this is short and they're all the same length. These are kind of long and skinny at the tip. So now I'm going to put a second one right over top of it, just to and it'll all go away. So I'm just letting that work down. I still got a nice tight pinch. Second one right over top of it. Go right through that. We're trying to settle that in. I got. I'm pulling really hard. I'm holding on to the hook so it doesn't look like. It, but if I, I'm pulling really hard on that hair. Just the first, the one before that, I pulled so hard I busted it. So I just let. Let, I just moved it forward. I tied it right back in the same way. <clears throat> so I want that super tight. And now look it over right now. If, it, if there's not enough hair, when you look underneath it, if there's not enough hair that goes back about a quarter inch, so it, you don't want it to look like two different segments. I mean, I guess it wouldn't matter, it's, you know, but for your own eye. And so now we're just going to go forward, trim this thing out. We're going to I'll stack, or I mean, I'll spin these up. This is good hair. It's not, and you know, I've read, but that's all I've got out of three stacks on this. So it's not, there's not a lot of underfur in here, but that's the crap that keeps you from spinning. So make sure you clean these things out well. I like to trim my tips off when I do this. So <clears throat> whenever we're spinning deer hair, we're going to come in here and we're going to Try to, we're going to start with this whole stack of hair, right? And boy, I got a lot of static going. It's just sticking to me. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to come around it. And I'm going to, what I'm trying to do right now, so you can see it really easily in this, in this uh, black on white with the thread. I'm letting the hair, as I pull down, I go one, two, and I'm making sure, I, I'm sure this would go out of focus if I, if I pointed at Jeremy, but... I got this gob of hair on top and I'm letting it, it's halfway around the hook right now. So that thing's in the middle of the hook, right? And now I don't really have, so I can just go. I, it, it does there. If you let it, if you let it work around the hook, starts on top, filters all the way around it. It's halfway through. I'm spun nice and tight. Work it forward on this. On most of my stuff, I don't stack real tight. This one doesn't have to be super tight, but I'm going to, I pushed it back a little bit. Now we're just going to do th two or three more. You can almost hear that hair. It's nice and coarse. Same thing. Come in, come around the back side, let it work. Second one, let it work around the hook. See how it's going down? It's it's halfway around it now. I just there. It, it's nice and tight. Give it a pack. You know, this stuff about having to have a clean shank to spin hair on, 
it, it, it does make a difference in some applications, not many if you do it right, but if you let this hair work around that hook, you can see I'm working on four strands of wire, right? And so I'm not on that clean hook, but I'm having no problem spinning the hair because basically you're not really spinning it so much on this style when you do multiples like this. You're just, you're letting it work around the hook and you're basically just tightening it down so they flare, they start like flat and then you tighten that thread and then it, like the tips of the scissors, you tighten and it forces it into a 45 degree angle. As long as it's built around the hook, it doesn't matter if you spin it or not. So last one, come in here, one turn, see how as that thread disappears, you can see it's white, now it's kind of gone away. Come in and grab it again, let it work around the hook. I spin it, it does, I don't even spin, I pull it. You know, and, and a lot of my videos I say do two and a half, that's a kind of a starter kit. You know, when you first start, it's a security blanket. But where I did, I let it work all the way around the hook, I pulled nice and tight, and it spun a little bit, but not much. I'm just tighten that down. And a lot of my flies, uh, my streamers, I talk about how I don't want tight heads on them because I'm not trying to make it float. Well, this one I put extra on and I'm making it float. Okay, so where is everything? Things have gone amuck here. So now we're down to the final stage of this thing. We got stuff hanging everywhere. It's beautiful. So we're going to come in here, and this is a, the same as most of them. I'm going to come in. I'm going to make a flat cut because I, this is going to be your flotation right there. That's what's going to keep this thing right forward. And you can do this in a lot of ways. You, you know, this is this is designed. I'm going to kind of trim it down, pointy, so the mouse's nose is pointy. If you wanted this to keep it flat it'll wobble a little bit more, right? Most of what I did with this one was to, mostly this is a lake mouse a lot of times, or usually when I'm mouse, it's kind of soft water. And so, you know, in a night thing, you're listening to it. And so I, I pull them and I let them rest and I pull them. They eat those things on the on this pause a lot. And you'll, you know, sometimes it's, a, especially on lake fishing at night, you'll just sit there and sit there. You can sit there for 30 seconds or more and then they blow it up. And so, but it depends on how you want your head to, I'm going to keep it kind of big uh, in the back here. I'm going to come forward just, and it, this is totally personal. And I, it doesn't matter how much I leave right there. This is just bulk. I do want this head, I want this head to float. I, I want, I grease the hell out of the head. I don't do anything to the back. I just let it sink down. So I'm going to come through here. I'm going to trim it down just a little bit more. And you can do this as a, you can do it as a wedge if you want to pop it a little bit. You know, if you want to do a slider style, like a Dahlberg. Okay. A little bit flatter. Thank you. Give me you. So then I'm going to take it, where do you go with those scissors? So it's just kind of a, kind of like a, just like a sculpin head to start with. And then I'm going to come over top of it and trim it out. I like to trim and, you know, I think most people trim in the hand like this is, uh, just so you can see, I like to look over top of my stuff. So I'm looking over top of it. And then I'm going to point its nose down just a little bit. So it's getting more conical here and I'm getting a little off balanced on that thing. So I'm coming down. All I'm doing is looking to see that I'm kind of, I don't think any of this would matter at night. I mean, it's really more of a, it's more of a water push than it is anything, but the head's kind of big and I'll finish it out. I'll finish it with the blade. Just come in here and kind of, it's getting kind of off balanced on me right there I'm not going to do much more than that right now that looks good but so you can see what it is 
from the bottom, this hair, and I, I'm still going to trim that off just a little bit right there, just so it's, you can see there's some of the, bring it down a little bit. Oops. There you go. There's some of the, the course, this just so, just for me, I'm going to do it for fun, but you wouldn't have to, but it's right there. But from the bottom side, you see this is already hanging down. This little bulk in here of that rabbit's really heavy. I mean, with, rabbit gets wet and it holds water and I've already weighted it. You can see underneath it is this little tail that keeps it kind of fat butted. So when it's down in the water and the idea of this fly is that it rides, that's the best yep. view, that it rides down kind of half like this and it's going back and forth. So I got the flank on there that keeps it kind of not being able to completely sink and wobbling back and forth. And then it's this, you could trim these legs off a little bit if you wanted to. So they're just back there in the kicker zone, right there. And again, I don't really think that means diddly squat. So there's the overall, you know, when you're looking from the bottom, the profile is gonna kinda come down. This is fat on the hind end, and it's hanging down the water. Not your traditional mouse pattern, just a, it's kind of the, I don't know, it was a, just something, and, I'm, and again, I would trim this down just a little bit. You can see, where's that OG? This one's a little bit smaller. It doesn't matter. It's, that's just, all that's to do is to keep it coming forward. Shape it, you know, if you want to shape it more nosy, I've seen, done them like this and flatten them out. It's just moving water. That's what it's going to do. But it's been a super effective fly for me. I uh, hope everybody's having a great time. Tying up, man, we got some spectacular top water stuff in this week. Uh, been really cool, so that's why we're doing this kind of top water stuff right here. And so keep those uh, flies coming, man. We're getting, we've had, just, we got two today that were just pretty spectacular. It's pretty fun to see. Seeing a lot of neat stuff, getting a lot of good kid stuff in, because uh, there's a youth division. That's been pretty fun too. So keep them coming. Hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.